Welcome to Michael Potts F1, everything Formula 1, but from a photographer's point of view. Round 2, Saudi Arabian Grand Prix in Jeddah. Max Verstappen was quickest in qualifying and won the race by a lot, securing his 100th podium in only his 187th race. Worryingly for his opponents, he did say in the press conference that he sees that not as a great achievement, but as 87 missed opportunities. Perez was second, giving the Red Bulls a 1-2, but he was much further back. This time last year, there was a veneer of a title challenge. However, this year, Max has a commanding advantage not only over the entire field, but also his teammate. This win was important because it appears to have quietened a lot of the drama at Red Bull. There has been an awful lot going on at the drinks company. After qualifying, it appeared that all parties were rushing headlong towards the abyss, and Max leaving Red Bull for Mercedes looked like the most likely outcome, with the team completely divided and in disarray. However, 24 hours later, and after Oliver Minslav had brought everyone to their senses, it appears that everything has returned to normal at Red Bull. It's a complicated story, and it keeps changing, and while it appears to be stable at the moment, I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't the last we hear of it. If you're not aware of the drama, have a look at this video by The Race, which gives a good summary of what's been going on. There is so much that's unclear or unknown that I don't feel comfortable commenting on the details until I know a lot more about the situation. What did appear to be clear after the race was the body language from Max, Christian, Adrian and Jerry made it look like there was complete unity at the team, and that is, after all, all that Max has been calling for. While the story has given everyone something to focus on other than racing, which, let's be quite honest, has been rather dull so far this year, there was something interesting to talk about on track. On qualifying day, Carlos Sainz pulled out due to appendicitis. His place was taken by young British Formula 2 driver Oliver Behrman. 18 years old, from Chelmsford in England, Behrman is a Ferrari reserve driver, but he has never, as far as I know, ever driven a Ferrari Formula 1 car. He did do some tests and FP1 sessions with Haas last year, but not with a Ferrari. He is quick, he has four F2 wins to his name, and he had put his F2 car in pole position before getting the call up from Ferrari. So having never driven the car, having only one practice session because he missed the two practice sessions on Thursday when Science was driving, to go straight into qualifying and to be only 0.6 of a second behind Max Verstappen in Q2. That's quite incredible. Sadly though, that wasn't enough to make it into Q3. But he did drive a very, very strong race, coming from 11th to 7th on one of the hardest tracks you could possibly drive on. He's the third youngest driver ever to debut in Formula 1, behind Max Verstappen and Lance Stroll, but neither of those scored a point in their first race. He is in fact the 68th driver to score points on debut. And he couldn't have chosen a better race to do it at because Ferrari president John Elkin was at the race and watched every minute. Ollie looked so happy with this experience, he couldn't stop grinning. The whole Ferrari family were wishing him well. It was brilliant to see. The race was grueling for him. This track has the most corners of any race on the circuit. And by the end, he'd actually damaged his headrest because he was leaning into it so hard due to the g-forces applied. Talking of his helmet, he does race with a bear icon on his lid, which is kind of cool given his surname. This is actually his F2 helmet, where he races with the number 3. In Formula 1, he had the temporary number of 38. Ollie is not the only reserve driver to have made a splash on his debut. Last year, Liam Lawson did very well in Zandvoort, stepping in for Daniel Ricciardo in a similar situation. And the year before, Nick de Vries, also an appendix substitute, managed to get a 9th place driving for Williams. However, both of those drivers were much more experienced and had actually driven their respective cars previously. So what happens next? Science will probably return for Australia, which is the next race. He actually came to the paddock on race day, the day after his operation. I thought that was a bit odd, and I, and I don't understand why he thought he needed to do that. But he made an appearance in full Ferrari kit, even if he looked slightly dazed and confused. Next year, Ferrari have Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc as their two drivers, so there's no real option available for Berman at the Scuderia. But there could be an option for him over at Haas. 
The team has close ties with Ferrari, and Oli has already impressed the team with his previous outings for them. So this puts the pressure squarely on Nico Hülkenberg and Kevin Magnussen. But both Haas drivers actually had very good weekends. Nico scored a single point, which for anyone not driving a Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren or Aston Martin is a remarkable achievement this year. Those five teams are such a step ahead of the lower midfield that will require something quite unusual, such as a crash, for any of them to get a look in. So, great result for Nico, but that wouldn't have been possible if Magnussen hadn't selflessly sacrificed his race, holding up the pack so Nico had enough time to pit and come out ahead of the chasing group. It was one of the best examples of teamwork in Formula 1 that I've seen for a long time. So, well done Haas, brilliant strategy, and great that they're the first midfield team to score a point this year, especially considering they thought they would be the slowest team before the start of the year. Talking of the actual slowest team, it was another bad weekend for Alpine. Both cars were out in the first qualifying session, but they did manage to beat Logan Sargent, which is a slight improvement from last weekend. This was a particularly bad weekend for the team to have performed so poorly, as Renault CEO Luca De Meo was watching from the garage. I don't think he could have liked what he saw. Things don't look good at the team. There have been a slew of firings and resignations, and it's left the team reeling, and somehow they need to pull it together and start showing results. De Meo is not a patient man. Alpine investor Anthony Joshua also attended the race, having knocked out Francis Ngannou in the second round the night before in a heavyweight clash in Riyadh. Other celebrities at the race included Jose Mourinho, the special one recently parted ways with Roma, and I was able to capture this photograph of Pharrell Williams in a cowboy hat. And this lovely shot of a winking Gigi Buffon, the number one of number ones, probably the best goalkeeper of all. Over at F2, Enzo Fittipaldi pulled off one of the great double overtakes to take the lead in the feature race, to pull off a remarkably audacious win from fourth place on the grid. This, together with his third place in the sprint race, has him second in the standings behind Zane Maloney. Kimi Antonelli, the Mercedes prodigy, is 10th, bagging a pair of 6th places this weekend as he comes up to speed with F2. Have you ever wondered how close a Formula 1 cars actually get to the wall in a street circuit like this in Jeddah? Well, this shot of Max Verstappen at the final corner just shows how little room there is for error. Sometimes, the drivers do get it wrong, as Lance Stroll demonstrated in his Aston Martin, clipping the wall and flying off into the barrier. He was able to walk away from this crash despite travelling at around 250 km per hour. As the marshals removed his car, we did get a glimpse of the underside, showing all the cunning ways the team channels air beneath the car. This creates a venturi effect sucking the car onto the tarmac and allowing the cars to reach the speeds they do. Thank you so much for joining me for this look back over the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, please do like and subscribe. Till the next one, goodbye.